Hi, y'all. Uh, ooh, 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 I got a word. It ain't gonna be a nice one either. It's gonna kinda, it's gonna hurt you a little bit. <laughs> um, I was writing and I had the Lord speaking to me about some stuff and uh, what he was, um, mm, what he, what he was speaking to me about, um, particularly was children and, um, I'm sorry. I don't even got kids and this hurt me. <laughs> I don't even got, but no, like, um, he was just pointing out to me how, um, there's a lot of his people. There's a lot of God's children that are, um, They are hindering God's will for their life because they're putting their children before the Lord. And um, it's mostly it's mostly centered towards people who are not married. They probably had the child in fornication. Then it would be for um, a married couple who has children. And um, he was speaking to me and he was just telling me that um, everybody has their own cross to carry. And we know that. For people who have been married and divorced and they come to Christ, their cross to carry is um, to either reconcile with their first spouse, their first covenant spouse, which is the only spouse that God acknowledges, or they can remain unmarried and they have to live a life of singleness. That would be their cross to carry. Um, for us, it could be something else. And, but for people, his individuals who are um, who come to Christ or who become, you know, children of God, they have children out of wedlock prior to coming to Christ. And there's some things that God is calling those people to do. Or maybe he has um, maybe a specific work that God wants that person to do and they can't do it because they're still in bondage to the old man. This is exactly what he told me. <laughs> he called it the old man. He said in their past life through their children. And it kind of stung a little bit because like I said, I don't have kids, but the way the Lord was just telling me, it was cutting me up. Because, I mean, it kind of, you would think that, like, the way we think, you would think that it's good to want to um, be there for your children. That's just, you know, that's just a, a natural thing for us. We think that if we have kids, the kids come first, right? Don't matter if you were married or not married when you had the kid. You think it's the right thing to do to be in that kid's life regardless. And the Lord was just telling me, um... That a lot of Christians they don't realize that um oh I don't even want to say it oh, <laughs> oh god oh that hurts um he called them children of bondage that's what he called them and I, it's, it's not saying that the Lord despises your children it's really nothing like that but um. <sighs> It's just the fact that um, the details of being a new creature in Christ Jesus that people don't realize that once you become born again of the Holy Spirit and you become a child of God, you're entering a new life. So there's probably a lot of plans and a lot of uh, goals that you set out to do centered around your children in a particular fashion. That's contrary to what God wants you to do, being a new child of God in the kingdom, because he has a mission for you and he has a purpose for you. And um, it causes some friction with that person or that child of God and the father because just like any other Christian, we have our own self-will and we have what we want to do. And God is saying, no, you go this way and you're going to do it like this. And you say, Lord, well, don't you want me to be here for my daughter? Don't you want me to be here for my son? And the Lord says, no, I want you to go this way. And um, I think the friction, I think the friction is self-will. It definitely is self-will. Our self-will always causes friction with God's will. But I think another thing that it is, is that our minds are wired to think a certain way when it comes to children. I mean, if you really think about it, which, which is why I said, that's why I said it would seem like that would be the right thing to do. But at the same time, the Lord tells us in Proverbs to not lean unto your own understanding, but you acknowledge me. And I will direct your paths. He didn't say you would direct your paths. He said, I'm going to direct your paths. You acknowledge me in all your ways. In all your ways means everything that you set out in your heart to do. 
whether it's centered around your child, your wife, your husband, your career, you acknowledge the Father in all your ways, meaning you seek me concerning that thing. Not seek me to bless what you want to do, but you seek me to see if that's what I want you to do. And you seek me to find out what my will is when it comes to that particular thing or that particular person. Leaning unto your own understanding is, um, we just have to accept the fact that when you come to Christ, because you are a new creature, you take upon a new mind as well. A lot of our thinking and our beliefs and everything that we've been taught, um, family-wise or just growing up, it's not, oh Lord, oh, um, it's not, it's not in alignment with God's will and the way God does things. It's not that he doesn't want you to be in your child's life. It's nothing like that. But where's the paper? Let me see how he said it because I just wrote it down. He talks about the child, the child born out of wedlock. He says the child was produced through sin and the will of man. And God's will, of course, is ordained by him through the Holy Spirit and the will of God. And I think that the book of John talks about that, how there's the will of the flesh, the will of man, and the will of God. Just like Jesus was conceived of God by the Holy Spirit, but other men through the seed of Adam which is what made Jesus different. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, meaning that he was God's promise. He was God's chosen person. God would not accept or be pleased with anything else but Jesus. That's what made Jesus different. He was the will of God. He would have no other sacrifice or means of salvation and righteousness. And when he's talking about the children, he called them the children of bondage. Which is why when people put children put their children before the Lord, um, it keeps them in a in a condition or a state of um, immobilization. They're stagnant. They're stuck. Bondage can't move, can't progress, can't go forward. Or there's just no prosperity in the path that they're choosing because it's not God's will and it's not um it's not ordained by the Father. He said, "My children must forsake and savor tithes completely." To be joined with me through my will, which is far more better. And he says that um, the parents, y'all are much more than someone's earthly uh, parent. You are now a child of God. And a child of the kingdom. I'm sorry. I got so much stuff up here. A new creature, born of the spirit, and a new life. You must savor all ties with your past life and everything produced from it to receive God's blessings and destiny for you. And in Matthew 10, 37, he led me to that. And he said, um, he that loveth father, this is what the scripture says. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Then he took me to Galatians chapter 4, which is really where it hurts, because <laughs> this confirms everything. I don't even know this was in here. I never just really studied this um, topic in Galatians like that, but it confirms everything he told me when he, um, because he was explaining to me how, oh, it hurts. <laughs> it's just, ugh. it's one of those things where it's like, I think everybody who really has a calling on their life and they can, they can like feel God pulling them away. From a, from a certain lifestyle or like their plans and their goals, which is most of us, especially if you have a prophetic anointing, the Lord will do that with you. But the savoring and the friction, it hurts so bad. And um, basically it's because a lot of those things, those people are very, very important to you. And it may seem like in the beginning that God is like just trying to take it away from you, but he's not trying to take it away from you. He has a plan that's, um, it's just far more better than what you're trying to do. And honestly, from what he's told me about it, I don't even think that it's, I don't even think that it's the children themselves that make it an issue. I don't, I don't even think it's the children. I think it's the fact that Christians are putting their children before God, just like you make anything else an idol. Um, 
the Lord may take some things away from you temporarily or for a season because you set that thing on the throne of your heart instead of God and what God wants to do. And that is idolatry, which is why he says, if you love this thing or this person more than me, you're not worthy of me. And this is why he called the children, <sighs> the children of bondage, because any path that you that you set out to walk on or any path that you choose contrary to God and what he's telling you to do, there's clearly not going to be any success or prosperity or blessing in that area. It's just not going to happen. If anything, it'll be cursed. Because it's not God's will. He's not going to put his hand on something he hasn't ordained. He's not going to bless something that's not his will. And um, when it comes to the kids, honestly, I was asking him, I was like, well, Lord, why is it such a, I was like, why is it such a bad thing? Like, what, what is it that you really just have against, um, you know, people clinging to their children? Like I said, you would think that that's something. It's a good thing, you know, because I'm like, well, you're a father. You love your children. You know, you want to be close to us. And uh, once again, he just told me. Um, he also told me that um, the way he loves us is completely different. And his relationship towards us as children is completely different from how humans love their children and because we are human we do tend to put our children before the lord and this is where he has a problem because i don't think we realize that little vices like that you may think it's just your daughter or just your son or it could be your husband or your wife you think oh i just i just love this person so much i just have to be here i have to do this or this is going to happen or this 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 and that and in reality because you are a son of God now, what it really is, is that person is actually a vice that keeps you connected in the wrong direction. It keeps you connected to your past life. It keeps you connected to self-will, the will of man, the will of the flesh. It keeps you connected to everything God does not want you to do. And he knows that, which is why he's trying to savor it. And I know that sounds really horrible, but honestly, if you go back and you read Ezra chapter 10, you will see where God uh, sent the prophet, I believe. He was speaking to the Jews and he told the Jews to divorce the wives that they had married because he didn't want them mixing. He didn't want them with, uh, with unsaved women, I think. And the Lord told them before they married the women not to marry them. And they were in rebellion. Of course, the women probably... Um, Cause the, cause the Jews to just compromise in so many different areas. I mean, that's that's what any relationship like that would do. But if you go read Ezra chapter 10, you see the Lord told those Jews to divorce the wives that he told them not to marry in the first place and leave the children that they made with them. Yes, the Lord did say that. So they have to divorce the wives and the children <laughs> and to go back and be in alignment with, uh, with God's will. I know that sounds really, really bad and it's, it's like it, it, ooh, like I said, I don't have kids and it hurts me because it's kind of, I don't, I mean, I guess I could, ooh. I mean, I could imagine it's not a good feeling at all. But um, I guess when the Lord just really breaks down and explains to you why it's such a problem for him, like I said, it's, it's not even the baby. It's not even the child, really. I think it's really what the child is connected to. And because that person has already made that child like an idol in their heart, it's easy for that. That child can easily be used to have that person divert from the will of God. And God wants all of you. So if he has to take your child out of your life or take your child permanently out of this world for you to completely comply with him and it's so he can have you all to himself, then he will do it. And let's take it back with uh, Abraham and Isaac. This is after, um, I want to talk about the second part first. When Isaac was a little bit older, you know, so Abraham finally got his promise fulfilled. And remember how the Lord was testing Abraham to sacrifice Isaac? And because um, I was asking the Lord that in the car one day. And um, he actually, the Holy Spirit was just speaking to me. He was just flooding me with scriptures about that, how a lot of people think, a lot of people think that their way is right and their way of thinking is right when it comes to their children. The Holy Spirit was like, no. I don't see things the way that y'all do. My thoughts are way higher than yours. And my understanding is far, far higher than the way y'all understand things. I understand that something little like this, something like family or children 
or um, certain relationships can draw you away from me. And it can, it can be such a stumbling block, uh, such a stumbling block and such a hindrance to where you may not even ever fulfill what I have for you to do because of this one person. If the Lord sees that that's what's happening, what's going to happen is he will take that person away from you. And like I said, I don't even think it's the baby in itself, not necessarily because God loves children. Jesus adores children. And um, even when um, the situation with Sarah, uh, Hagar and Abraham happened, um, let me talk about that, because what happened with that, <laughs> Abraham and Sarah, they got so impatient. If you go read in Genesis, they got so impatient waiting on God to fulfill his promise uh, for them, for him to give them a son. That um, he, she told Abraham to go sleep with one of her uh, her servant girls, the Egyptian woman. And of course, you know, they had the baby and um, Ishmael. And they were trying to make Ishmael God's promise. And God said, no, it's not going to be Ishmael. I told you from the beginning, it's going to be Isaac. I'm going to give you a son. So once again, even though Abraham gave, gave birth to another woman, which... Actually, Hagar represents the will of man as well, because it's like God tells us to do something specific and we try to find loopholes around it. You try to find some type of back door to get what you want. And I mean, it backfired on them because God, like I said, if it's not God's will, he's not going to bless it. So unfortunately, that poor baby Ishmael, he had to represent something very negative. He, Ishmael represents the will of man. He is the fruit of the will of man. Ishmael is the fruit of the curse. Unfortunately, Ishmael is an example of what happens. Ishmael is actually ISIS today. That whole like lineage of people, the Muslims and Arabs, that's that's Ishmael's descendants. So that poor child had to be the representation of something very negative just because Abraham and Sarah couldn't obey one instruction from the Lord. And they couldn't just wait on him. So that child represents the curse. And it's like God had to use Abraham's son Ishmael just to show him you went against me, you did the complete opposite of what I told you to do. You did not wait on me. You had a baby with another woman who wasn't even your wife, <laughs> you know, and now you want me to bless Ishmael. Because I think Abraham even said that in Genesis. He said, no, Lord, make Ishmael the one. And the Lord said, no, I'm not going to make Ishmael the one. I told you it's going to be Isaac. This is it. Now, he did have mercy on, on the Egyptian woman. He did have mercy on Hagar. And he told her that um, he was going to bless her as well. And he was going to bless her son because he was, you know, the fruit of Abraham. But this, he's not the chosen one. Just like Jesus uh, just told me, <laughs> or the Lord just told me when I wrote it down, how um, just like Jesus was conceived of God by the Holy Spirit, Jesus was God's chosen sacrifice. Jesus was God's chosen son. Jesus was what God wanted to use to bring, to draw man unto himself and to reconcile man unto himself. He didn't want the other type of sacrifices. And it's like, we don't get that. We don't get it at all. You cannot lean onto your own understanding when it comes to stuff like this, because I'm sure the Jews were thinking, well, why not continue the sacrifices? Why not continue the law? You know, even after Jesus was crucified and we already had the new covenant, the Jews were still like, causing the disturbance and being a stumbling block to the early church because they were telling Christians that they still had to be circumcised. They still have to keep the law. So clearly you can see that although man thinks his way is right, it's really not right. The Jews thought, even though Jesus came and was crucified, we still have to keep the law. And Abraham thought, well, even though my son is here, I already have a son. I already have Ishmael. And God's like, no, still not Ishmael. I told you, this is what I want. So if God's not even going to accept any other sacrifice besides Jesus, and he clearly tells you in his word, I'm not pleased with any man who does not receive my son. I don't care how much you try to obey me and you know, how much you try to be righteous apart from Jesus Christ. That's my son. I chose him. This is my will for humanity. Don't come with me with no law. Don't come to me with no commandments. Don't come to me with no sacrificing animals. I don't want that. And Jesus even said that. I think it was prophesied in the scriptures where Jesus said uh, sacrifices didn't please God. He didn't want that. He wanted Jesus to come down here. So that's what he did. And he obeyed God and he submitted to God until the death. And he laid down his life just like the father wanted him to do. So we have it so bad 
leaning onto our own understanding and we're trusting in our own will for what we want to do. We think our plan is so much better than what God wants to do. And God says, no, I choose this. This is what I chose. This is what I'm going to do. And you're going to have to comply to it. And if you don't, if you want to reject that, then you're not worthy of me. Um, so, um, what the Lord did, and uh, when you read Sarah, how she responded to Hagar and Hagar having a child for Abraham, even though she was the one who suggested the whole, she came up with the whole idea. You see later that she just got agitated and she had contempt towards Hagar and she just straight up told Hagar that, um, no, she told Abraham, she said, her son, that boy is not going to be, uh, it's not going to be raised with my child and they have to go. So... Which was God. I mean, you really can't blame her. Like, when you read it, it does kind of sound salty. Like, wow, like, that's me. Like, you just going to kick the kid out, you know? But I honestly believe that um, Abraham's heart was so strong, you know, towards his, towards Ishmael, towards his son. I mean, who knows? You never know. Like, let's say, let's say they did keep Ishmael around. And they did end up having Isaac later. Because Ishmael was the firstborn. You never know. Abraham could have been showing favoritism towards Ishmael. And God probably saw that that's probably what would have happened. So I think God was sovereignly using Sarah to just react like that. To remind Abraham of what God's will was. And sometimes we think, well, it's just that person being mean. Or it's just that. I don't think she was just being mean. You got to see God's hand behind stuff. Like, I think that was just God's way of reminding Abraham. This is my will. And this is what it's going to be. I understand that's your son. I understand you love Ishmael, but that's not my will. I told you that from the beginning. Now you're in a situation to where you're clinging to him and you can't let Ishmael go. But if you would have listened in the first place, we wouldn't even be having this problem. So as a result, I will bless Ishmael. I will take care of Hagar while they're away, but I have a plan for you. The same thing I told you a long time ago. It has not changed. My mind has not changed. It's still the same thing. I'm going to bless them. But they cannot stay here. That's not my will. I have another plan for you. I have something I want to use you for. So they're going to have to go on the back burner. I'll take care of them while they're away. That's not your concern. You know, don't fret yourself over all of that. They're fine. They're in my care. As you see, if you go read Genesis, the Lord did uh, say he was going to bless Ishmael, which is very, very good. Praise God. <laughs> and that should encourage y'all who may be in that position. Because I think um, a lot of it is just fear. Um, and just, you know, the Lord, he's still your father. I think he really does understand how you feel deep down inside when it comes to your child. So it's, it's not like he doesn't, he can't relate to you. Um, the Lord had to sacrifice his own child. You know, he had to sacrifice his own son for us. So there's no area where God cannot relate to you. He understands exactly how you feel. He knows it's a very hurtful and painful thing to give up his son, you know, but, um, I think it's mostly just rooted in fear. I think um, leading unto your own understanding, mostly people's minds are not renewed in that area. So they think that if they obey God and if they kind of separate, they're abandoning their child in a sense. Or they think that um, they're not being a good parent if they leave. And none of those things are true. That's all a carnal mind. And it's, it's not the mind of Christ at all. Because if the Lord is telling us in his word that he even blessed Ishmael after he sent them off, then um, like I said uh, before, I, I don't even think it's the baby. I just think it's the fact that God has a specific plan and he has something special that he wants to do. And you have to remove yourself in order for that to get done. It is not the child alone. The child is not really the problem. God loves children. I think it's just the child is a vice. And I think a lot of people, they don't want to accept that. That child is keeping you in bondage to so many different things and it's causing you to rebel against God. And if it continues down that road, he is going to take that child away from you. And it, although it's not documented in scripture, I think that possibly could have been in Abraham's heart, like I said. Because um, if you read, it says that Abraham, I think, it's, I think it's that he was heartbroken or it just grieved him so much when Sarah was like, get rid of the child, get rid of Hagar. Which, like I said, it was God sovereignly using her to say that, to continue to, to implement his plan that he had from the beginning and to remind Abraham God's will, this is not God's will. God has a different plan. And if you read um, when Abraham was sending off, ooh, makes me want to cry. <laughs> it is kind of hurtful, you know, like um, it said that when Abraham was sending off his son Ishmael and sending off Hagar, 
because he had to respect his wife and the Lord through his wife. It says he was heartbroken. You can go read it. It grieved him a lot because he loved his son. But he obeyed the Lord, though, and he trusted God. And um, I haven't read anything after that in Genesis to see what happened with Ishmael. Um, I don't know if they were ever in close contact again. But um, obviously, if you had ch if you had children prior to getting saved, there's not much you can do about that. I mean, what's done is done. But I mean, this should show people why you should just stay in the confines, you know, or within the confines of God's commandments and don't fornicate. Because when you have situations like that, where you have a child out of wedlock with somebody who's not your spouse, it causes friction like this. Now you have a problem because when you do get saved, and clearly God does have a plan for you. If you get saved, you're not just going to be lazy sitting on the bench in the kingdom. Obviously, he's going to use you for something. And it requires you to savor yourself from your past life. And your child is connected to your past life, especially if they're not even living with you. Nine times out of ten, the child is with the mother, not the dad. So now when you come to God and you get saved and it's required for you to kind of, you know, lose yourself from that child. Or really, like I said, I don't even think the Lord would probably remove you completely or remove them completely i mean he could <laughs> i really don't know i mean it depends on the individual and what he wants to do specifically for that person but when it comes down to it it's like you can't even submit to god and you can't even which hinders your salvation in general because if you're not submitted to god in one area then you're not submitted to god at all because you have an idol in your heart and your idol is your child if god gave up his son for you why can't you give up your daughter or your son for god to obey his will and just trust him. And I was talking to um I was talking to a friend about this. I said, you know, a lot of people struggle with that, but it is fear. It really is a carnal mind and it's just fear. Cause my personal experiences when it comes to me surrendering to God, I've learned that once you surrender that thing to him, he blesses you with it. So I think that's probably a situation like maybe God, you know, maybe your child won't be as involved in your life and what God ha is gonna have you and um Maybe your future spouse to do ministry wise, maybe he's going to use y'all for something really big and that baby probably just can't be there like that. But I don't think it's going to be a situation to where God's just going to like remove, the, you know, just take the child out of you. I mean, unless you continue rebelling against him, he may do it that way. But um, even if the Lord wanted to take your child away, which is a hurtful thought, people should ask themselves, you know, if it came down to that, would you give your child up for the Lord? This Abraham almost did it because God was testing him to see if he really loved him. And, you know, Jesus and the father, they're one. And Jesus just said in Matthew 10, if you love son or daughter more than me, you're not worthy of me. And at the end of the day, children are a blessing from the Lord. They can't get you to heaven or hell. If the Lord wants to take your child today, I mean, there's nothing you can do about it. You have to love him over everything. Over your husband, over your wife, over your children, period. So even if it was a situation where he wanted to just completely remove the child out of your life for good, because I want to go use you to preach to the nations. Are you going to continue fussing at God and telling God, no, because I want to be here. I want to be a mom. I want to be a dad. I have to be here. This is my plan. Well, your plan is not God's plan. And if you're dividing yourself from God's plan, you're dividing yourself from the Father. You're cutting yourself off from the Holy Spirit and you're not abiding in Christ, which is what salvation is hidden in. So technically, you're not even saved. We use the term saved so much, but the only thing that really saves you is abiding in Christ through sanctification and his blood cleansing you. So if you're not abiding in Christ, you're pretty much, you're not under the covering and you're just like fresh meat for the devil. All because of one person and rebellion and lack of faith and trust in God. We fear God's will for us so much and we fear God's plans for us because we don't know what to expect and we can't see anything. And that makes us uncomfortable because we're used to seeing things and he wants you to walk by faith. He doesn't want you to walk by sight anymore. Even if your child is not included nowhere in God's plan, he wants to know that you still trust him, that what he does have planned is far more better than what you ever thought to do, period. And unfortunately, Although this is what your heart wants right now, 
It's not going to give you any blessings. It's not going to be prosperous. It's going to be a cursed path because God's hand is not upon it anyway. So would you rather live the rest of your life miserable, unhappy, unsuccessful, not prosperous, going to hell because you're clearly not a body in the Lord. You rejected God and you rejected his um. You rejected his will for you. You rejected the unction and the conviction of the Holy Spirit just to do what you want to do because your heart was set on your, your daughter or your son more than it was the Lord. You chose. The Lord tells you in Matthew 6, no man can serve two masters. He will either love one and hate the other or hold to one and despise the other. But you can't serve both of them. Somebody got to be on the throne of your heart. It can only be one person. It's either going to be this idol over here or the Lord. It's not worth it. And we should learn that just from anything that we choose apart from God. It could be your child. It could be your career. It could be um, family. I mean, it could be anything. But the thing is, the irony, the irony of all of it, it's like when you finally do choose that thing and you reject God and you tell God, no, I'm not doing it. I choose this. This is where my heart is at. It's not even what you expected. And that's God's sovereignty in effect, because that's actually his judgment upon you for rejecting him and rebelling against him in the first place. Because you thought it was going to be good. You thought it was going to be just perfect. You had it set in your heart and just planned how everything was going to be. You were going to be a family woman or a family man. You were going to be there for your child. And here you see that it just brought you nothing but misery. And God is going to use that to teach a lot of people how his heart and his plans are so much better for you. And you should trust his will over your own. God is not doing stuff to hurt us. If God gives you something or if, he, or if he's telling you to do a specific thing, trust me. God is the only person who can essentially give prosperity, give blessings, give you true joy. So if he set out a path for you, trust and believe that that path is going to give you all of those things. And anything that you choose apart from him is not no matter how much you think it is, no matter how much you long for it, no matter how much you desire it, you have to deny yourself. And you have to sacrifice what God sacrificed for you. God sacrificed his son, so why can't you give God your child? And he loves you. He loves you. He loves your child. Put your child in God's care. He will take care of the child. Everybody will be taken care of. He wants us to cease from our labor and to surrender. So this is another area where you see God wants you to rest in. Because if you notice, anytime we worry and we fret and we try to do things our own way, um, it takes us out of the presence of God. Because that's not surrender. That's the complete opposite of surrender. And that's not trusting God either. Trust me. God can open up the earth and swallow up a whole bunch of Jews for being rebellious and complaining. I'm pretty sure he could take care of your family. <laughs> he could take care of your child just fine without uh, using you. But that's what he wants to do. But, um, yeah, he did. He told me that um, children that are born out of wedlock, ooh. They represent uh, just children of bondage. They represent bondage. They represent um, the old life, the old man, the past life uh, because of what they're connected to. And a lot of people don't want to see their child this way. But uh, I mean, there's some ugly legalistic Christians. They'll just flat out say that they're bastard children, which is kind of true because you had them out of wedlock. And um, that's not the way that the Lord has ordained for us to have children. You're supposed to have children through marriage. And um, Ishmael was a bastard child unfortunately, but I mean, that's the truth. But that's another reason why the Lord usually um, pulls people away from their family and tries to save her a court like that from children because technically the child was produced and uh, is the fruit of sin. No, I'm not condemning children at all. I'm just saying it is what it is. There's a lot of children that are, I was born out of wedlock, you know? So there's a lot of situations where People are having children. Obviously, most of the world is not saved, so it's going to be, you know, a pretty prevalent thing. People are having children out of wedlock. They're fornicating and they're having babies. And I don't know if you can tell by now, but obviously it does not work out. The child is raised with a spirit of a rejection and abandonment because one parent isn't there. Well, you would never have had that problem if y'all was married in the first place. If you would have kept your legs closed, you would have kept your penis in your pants, you would not even be dealing with what you're dealing with today. 
So, like I said, it's hurtful, but the Lord did tell me. Children who are born out of wedlock, especially for the situation where a Christian cannot submit to God because they're putting their child before the Lord, that child is a is fruit of the curse. That's true. Because you just see Ishmael, obviously, you know, or unfortunately, he was used as a type and figure of the curse. Look at Ishmael's children today. They're beheading people. Sexual immorality is a really, really big thing to God. And unfortunately, it's like when they do have these children out of wedlock and you fornicated, now you have a situation to where you can't even obey God as well as a Christian because you did this a long time ago and now you feel like you're obligated to do something the Lord is telling you not to do. You're just seeing it one way. All you see is that I'm a parent, I'm a mother, I'm a father, I have to be here and do this when no you're not just a parent anymore now you're a son or a child of god god's thoughts are way higher than yours your plan is not the same as what god wants you to do it's two completely different paths your child represents the will of man because they were produced through the will of man you and your sin Pull down your pants and did what you did. That was not the will of God. That was the will of flesh and that was the will of man. Your child is the fruit of the will of man. Your child is the fruit of the curse. So now when you come to God and now you have to comply and submit yourself to the will of God, you can't do it. This is why God specifically pulls people away from their family. You can see it all throughout scripture. He told Abraham to leave his family. Jesus called his disciples up from their families. Um, I forgot the guy's name. I think the first four disciples or the first two disciples that Jesus called left their families and they followed Christ. One disciple, I think, was it Peter, wanted to go bury his father when his father died. And Jesus said, let the dead bury their dead. I'm sure that probably didn't feel good to that disciple when, when Jesus said that. But I mean, Jesus understood how one person, your family, could easily divert you away from him. Your heart can still be connected to this world through your child. And that is why God is pulling you away from them. This is why God pulls Christians away from their family. And unfortunately, if you don't even obey when the Lord is, is pulling you away from your family, this is why he turns your family against you. Because they're keeping you connected to the world. Unfortunately, Although God loves everyone, there's still a vice and there's still a vessel being used to keep you connected to the things of this world. This is why you're still in bondage. This is why you're still stuck. This is why you're immobilized. And this is why the path and the life that you've chosen is you're not happy with it because it's not God's will. It never was God's will for you to fornicate and have a baby and get, you know, get pregnant or get someone else pregnant. That was never God's will. This is, um, it's just a cross that some people have to carry. Like I said, I'm glad I ain't got kids and I have to deal with none of that. Like, I just be thinking, like, I always complain about so much stuff, but I'm glad I don't have to deal with that. I'm glad I'm not divorced and remarried and can't marry ever. I'm glad I ain't got no kid, I ain't got to deal with nothing of that. The most the Lord would have to do with me on is, like, um, probably other ways. I'm plugged into the matrix somehow. But, uh, for the most part, I'm just pretty solo. It's not really hard for me to just kind of let go and walk away and just do what God wants me to do. But for some people, it is because they're in those situations. And um, God's grace is sufficient for everybody, even if it was the worst situation that you could be in. Even if it's a situation where you have to just abandon everything. Like, um, I think celebrities are probably having worse, personally, because they have a far more better life than we do. They have, they're, they're that much more... Um, attached to material things that we would be. So just imagine the cross uh, that a celebrity would have to carry if they came out of the world to follow Christ. You know, like I said, everybody has their cross to carry. And it's, it doesn't feel good when God is savoring that cord like that. But you have to choose. And his grace is sufficient for everybody. So he, he'll meet you where you're at. He'll come down to your level. And um, he does promise you that if you do choose him, he can fulfill you and satisfy you a lot more than what you thought your past life could and whatever else is connected or produced from your past life. I promise you, whatever I have set out in my heart for you will make you happy. 
period. So here he said, um, this is Galatians chapter four, verse 22. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid, the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh. That's exactly what the Holy Spirit told me. The children represent the will of man. And that's prophetic because it's in the scripture. But he who was born of the bondwoman was born after the flesh. But he of the free woman was by promise. So you see one was God's will and one wasn't God's will. Which things are an allegory for these are the two covenants. The one from the Mount Sinai which gendereth to bondage. So you see one child is a child of bondage. Which is Agar. For this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia in answer to Jerusalem which now is and is in bondage with her children. But Jerusalem which is, a, which is above is free which is the mother of us all. In verse 28, now we brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. But as then, he that was born after the flesh persecutes him that was born after the spirit. Even so it is now. So the Bible just said, you know, itself that Ishmael was definitely, um, he meant even if, even though Ishmael was an innocent child, this is what people don't think about. Y'all keep looking at your children as if they're just innocent and you need to be there and they're just this, this, and that. But honestly, because of, especially if they were, um, if they were born out of wedlock, nine times out of 10, unless they get saved or something, they're still going to manifest the curse because you were abiding under the curse when you had them. So the word says that, um, but as then he that was born after the flesh persecutes him that was born after the spirit. That's Muslims today. ISIS attack Christianity. Ishmael was a child. He probably never even see, saw none of that coming. But because of what his parents did, they rebelled against the father and did something they had no business doing. Unfortunately, that was the manifestation and fruit of what they did. The curse. The Bible says you will eat the fruit of, uh, of your way. And he still calls Isaac a... Uh, the child of the free woman, the child of promise, because God is establishing once again, this is my will. And this is the only thing I'm going to bless. I'm not going to bless what you want to do. I'm not going to bless what you want me to do. I'm going to bless what I've ordained and what I've spoken and what I've established and what I want to do because I'm God and I work things according to the counsel of my will, all things. Now, whether you want to comply with that or not, that's up to you. If you want to sacrifice your own salvation and your own happiness and your own joy and all the blessings that God has for you because you think that your will is better. Instead of asking the Lord to um, conform your heart um, unto the desires of his will. Lord, I know my heart is not perfect. I know the things that I desire and that I love right now are probably really impure and they're selfish. And I don't trust myself. I want to trust you. So help me comply to what you want me to do. No matter how much it hurts, help me trust you. That's what we should all be praying. And that's a wake up call for those of you out there who really do think that your plan is better. Unfortunately, you probably already got a little taste of it by now. It's not better. You're miserable. You're stuck. You're in bondage. You're not free to do what you want to do because of that child. When if you would just let go and surrender to the Lord. And you give, the, you give your child to the Lord, sacrifice your, uh, your child to the Lord, just like he sacrificed his son for you, you could be free. And like I said, it's not even the baby itself, really. It's just the fact of that child is connected to your past life. It's connected to the world because the child represents the will of man. It's what the child is connected to. And she's or he's being used as a vice to keep you in bondage to the world. And the Lord does not want any of his people in fellowship or emerging with the spirit of the world. He will take your child from you if that is what you are doing. Because you belong to him. You were bought with a price. Nothing should be put before the Lord. All of you belongs to him, especially your heart. He should be on the throne of your heart, not your child. That's it.